Each video camera has its own unique workflow when working with its footage and post, and HDSLRs are no exception. Today we're going to be talking about using your HDSLR footage on a PC with Adobe products. This is HDSLR 101. This episode is made possible in part by CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast. ICANN, features you need, prices you want. LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video. Lightcraft Workshop, the perfect tools to create the perfect image. Blinko Lighting, professional lighting for photo and video. Hi, I'm Sean Bowers with NextWaveDV.com. As you can see, Tony didn't make it in the class today, so I'll be your substitute teacher. Um, just a little background about what I do here um, at NextWaveDV.com. Um, I'm the behind the scenes guy, you don't see me on camera too much. I'm usually either behind it or I'm behind the desk working in post, editing the footage, uh, doing visual effects, also doing um, motion graphics. All the intros you've seen for a lot of our series have been created by me. And uh, I just wanted to sit with you, go through uh, the workflow. Since you've gotten the footage now, you've learned how to do all that, you need to get your footage onto your PC and start editing. Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. As we covered in a later episode, the type of media that you need to use with your camera, you're either going to have a compact flash, which was backwards, and you're going to have or an SD card. Um, and we covered the speeds in the previous episode, but we also need to consider how to get it onto the hard drive. You're going to need a reader. Uh, that would be the best option. If you can get a FireWire reader, that's going to be fairly quick. You're going to be able to get your footage offload onto your hard drive pretty fast. Can you use a USB? That's fine too. Uh, expect, if, make sure you get one with speed using USB 2.0. If you're using one, uh, you're going to be waiting several hours to get a couple gigs of footage from your card onto your hard drive. Uh, and the, of course, you can always just use the included USB cable with your camera. That works fine too. Uh, it just might take a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. So covering that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get working in in post here with CS4 and 5. Okay, now before we get into Adobe and start editing the footage that we got onto our hard drive, we need to talk about transcoding. Do you need to do it and why? Uh, if you've ever tried editing the raw footage pulled right off of the 5D um, at all in CS4, you'll notice that you may not, you might have a really hard time working with it. The 5D in the H.264 codec that it records in isn't very friendly uh, for editing in uh, Premiere. So what you have to do is we need to find a way around that so that you can uh, actually scrub through and work with it. So if you're using CS4, you don't have a high-end computer, you're probably going to have to transcode. Now, if you're using uh, Adobe Premiere CS5, you may not have to. They added the Mercury playback engine uh, and optimized the playback for those types of files. So you should be able to get by with just using the raw, uh, be able to make it, um, be able to edit real time using that footage. Another reason that you would want to transcode your uh, HDSLR footage is because when it's recorded, the codec usually gives it a color spacing of 420, which doesn't give you a whole lot of room uh, if you're going to be doing some excessive color grading. Now, you want to transcode that. The, primarily, the program that we'll show you here is Cineform, and it will repackage it into an AVI, which works well with, uh, with Premiere, and also give it a 422 color spacing and give you more latitude uh, for color correction, but also it makes it 10-bit. Now the reason we use Cineform mainly is because of the quality that it kicks out. The program itself is uh, goes for $130 I believe right now, but if you're using a 5D and you are using CS4 or you're gonna do a lot of color grading, it's almost a necessity to have so that you can uh, achieve the best results. Now I'll just do a quick overview of the program. This is uh, Cineform uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry, Neo Scene by Cineform, and you can do batch converts, so you only have to uh, set it, and then you can walk away, make a sandwich, or take a bath, whatever you like to do for fun. Um, 
it's basically just go and you can select a whole folder uh, that you have your footage in on your hard drive or you can select individual files pretty self-explanatory you just go ahead and pick that and then you will be able to go ahead and start it and it will go and it will keep the same resolution I'm not going to go into depth using the tool here just so you're aware that it's out there and it's <clears throat> the recommended tool for transcoding if you need to work with if you're working primarily with 5d footage I'd pretty much consider it a have if you're going to be doing a lot of work with your 5d and another option is that you can just use the media encoder built right into Premiere to take your <clears throat> files that you have from your 5d and then just encode them to what you're gonna what your final output will be something similar and the same size at least uh, that will allow you to work much more smoothly in Premiere and you can just do that by opening it up uh, separately you can add the files that you need to add um, let's say we'll add a couple here just for you can add as many as you want at a time then you can go in you can change the settings and <clears throat> from here you'll be able to go ahead and change it to whatever you would need uh, to output it as something that might be close if you're planning on uploading it to YouTube you can go ahead and just go ahead and pre-render them out and then go ahead and cut them now that's not going to work too great uh, if you're going to do a lot of uh, color coding or color grading or anything like that uh, but it's uh, definitely a decent workaround uh, depending on what your use is going to be for and another option <clears throat> that you can use especially if you have a slower computer or you're working on a laptop is making your working with offline files now I'll go through and explain that a little bit basically what you're doing is you're taking your raw footage you have from your 5d and then you're going to encode that into a very much smaller type of file that will be able to easily handle on your in your editor with your computer and then once you're done editing making your cuts transitions then you're able to go ahead and bring back the footage and I'll just give you a quick overview of that so you're aware uh, in here I had brought in some of the some 5d footage already that we have and uh, you can do this with multiple files at once basically uh, what I had already done before is I used the Adobe media encoder to encode, encode these files like in batch into smaller ones that would be easily workable in with, if you have a slower computer or a CS4. So basically after you go ahead and uh, encode those you can select the ones that you want to swap out you can select multiple at a time and if you right click on them you would go to make offline when you click that definitely want to make sure your media files remain on the disk you don't want to delete them I mean unless that's something you want to do but for what we're trying to accomplish want them to remain on the disk so that takes them offline if we were to try to view one of these let me just go ahead and pull it out to the uh, timeline here you see that it's offline so what we're going to do is we're going to go select these we're gonna link them to the media that's gonna be like our proxy and I had put those in this folder and I switched it over to AVI's uh, because that's what Premiere works best with. So it'll ask you um, for each file, which file do you want to link it to? So I'm just going to go ahead and link those real quick. Okay, so now I have them linked and you saw right here that it changed over. Uh, when you're working with it, you the sequence that you create, you want to be what your... your um, what the original files are going to be with the size so when we created this sequence we went in and I'll just create another one so you can see with uh, went ahead and used the preset and created it so you want it to be what your original files the size they are so just to fill the frame you just right click on the clip and you can scale the frame size so now we'll pull some of the other ones in here So now as you see we can scrub through this. Oh, we got to do this. You can scrub through them fairly easily. You'll be able to work with them. And they won't have you won't have any problems as far as uh editing. You can just go through add your transitions, uh you know, cut everything. And then once you're done uh with your cuts, you're able to go back in and select these. 
Click on Make Offline again. That'll take them all offline. Then go back, link the media, and then you're going to link it to your original clips. Now, one uh, thing that I didn't mention here, if we go back into the proxies, when I originally had um, assigned them to the proxies, I made some that were actually a lower quality size that in movie movie wrapper because if the file names match exactly to what your originals were once you pick the first one Premiere will automatically assign all of the other ones as long as they have the exact same file name so that's helpful you don't have to go through each one if you have a lot of clips so let's go ahead and link these back to the original files we're looking for 184 and when I hit select here it should automatically do the other two Oh, and it didn't because I'm recording this and everything must go wrong while I do this. Oh, the other one took because it... Anyways. So, now if we look here, that went ahead and uh, we have our original files in there. And we can go ahead and render this out uh, to whatever f the final, pro final format that we need to. And everything uh, stays intact, including any effects that you add to the clips. When we return, we'll show you examples of color grading within Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. This episode is made possible in part by Dayflow Lighting Systems, the nation's best-selling lighting solutions for photo, video, and filmmakers. Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high-definition monitoring. CheesyCam.com, the latest gear reviews and DIY video and photo projects. JAG35, affordable solutions for filmmakers. All right, that brings us to color grading. Now, there's a couple options that you have when you're going to be color grading. There's a couple of free ones that we'll go through, and there's also one that I would like to mention. Called, it's a plug-in and also a standalone for Premiere is Magic Bullet Looks. Now, Magic Bullet Looks you can get from Red Giant Software. Um, oh, yeah, uh, that's the wrong Magic Bullet, but um, this is the one I'm looking for right here. Uh, it's uh, it's a plugin that you can buy. For, uh, it's going for three ninety nine right now. Uh, it's really great. It gives you, like I say, a hundred look library here. You're going to be able to pick from a lot of different types of presets, um, but then you're able to tweak those. So it gives you a good starting point. We'll go over that right now with CS five. We'll go ahead and add it to our clip here. All right, so this is this is this is the transcoded footage that we're working with right here, and we'll go ahead and get into the program. All right, so we have our footage, and like I said, it's got a lot of presets that you can get into uh, to do the look that you're achieving. Uh, in one of the previous episodes, Tony had talked uh, when setting up your camera about shooting flat. I uh, showed you how to set up a thing for that um, reason being is if you are going to plan on doing color grading having your um, not having your blacks clipped in your highlights uh, also you get to retain that information it gives you more latitude to work with so you have more control over what you can do with your shadows and what you can do with your highlights and midtones um, I'm just gonna go through a few of these you can see that you can add quite change the look and the feel of your uh, film pretty easily uh, these are just all the presets, so if you um, one of these works for you, you can just go ahead and use one right off the bat. Uh, but you're also able to uh, modify each of these and add other um, options by going through and um, adding whatever you may need. I'm not going to go into too much detail because uh, it's not really a tutorial for color grading. But that's one option. It's a great option, uh, really easy, uh, works very well. Um, one thing that you can see is that uh, with the transcoded, even in CS5 with the transcoded footage, it's going to scrub a lot better than it will than if we apply it to the original footage here, which I'll do real quick just to give you an example. So it's going to be a lot more choppy. It's going to take more time to render on the fly. Uh, and you can play back, but you know it's depending on your system, you're probably going to want to go with the transcoded version of that. Uh, another option is that you can just use curves, which is uh, already included with Premiere. 
we'll just uh, do that's just going to be for some basic color correction but if you're not planning on doing anything major you can just use curves to add a little more punch to your image and we'll go in underneath uh, color correction here we're going to use RGB curves and we'll add that to our footage all right one little trick here is uh, if you're dealing with uh, effects and you got plugins and everything in here and you need more room you can see these are pretty small and moving around in here to get curves is going to be a pain so there's this little uh, double arrow that you can click and there we go it'll make it so much easier for you to work with these curves and other types of plugins so let's just kind of just do a basic uh, adjustment here we'll do a simple contrast curve here overall um, as you can see down here is where you have your affecting your shadows and up here is where you're affecting your highlights uh, and then of course this is mid so pretty self-explanatory as far as that now uh, you can go in we can add some red to the highlights if we want take it out of the shadows maybe add some blue to the shadows and pull that down uh, so there's many different types of looks you can go for so we just went from uh, something a little bit more punchy than just what was there originally um, and pretty much you can just mess around try to get the look that you want you can uh, do quite a bit with the curves here uh, but that's just a quick overview like so we're not going to get into too much detail well besides the uh, just using curves inside of Premiere you also have another free option if you happen to own After Effects uh, there's a <clears throat> an effect that comes natively with it that is free and I'll go ahead and show you uh, what it is if you go up to uh, if you've got your footage and you got it on the timeline you want to go up to the effect and synthetic aperture color finesse 2 now this is for uh, CS4 has color finesse 2 and CS5 has color finesse 3 they're both free uh, as you can see though it is asking that we ask for a name and serial number uh, just so you're aware uh, when it looks like the color finesse registration code is located in the same place as your Adobe serial number so you'll be able to enter that in here it'll just be along with your uh, your serial number that you got with After Effects and it starts with CFLE so if you're having um, you get that that's it's still free for you to use you just have to enter the serial number so we'll get this grid while we're working with it but that's okay for now um, you'll go in and you can click on the full interface and it'll bring up the program it's got quite a few options and you can get quite advanced with it but I'm not going to go into anything uh, but as you can see there you do have quite a few tools um, Okay, just to give you a quick overview, we're just going to go into HSL here. Uh, hue, saturation, lightness. You can see we have controls for master, highlights, shadows, midtones, and slider bars so you can affect those values. But if you click on hue offsets here, you can see we have color wheels for each of those uh, ranges that we had there. So you can go ahead and you can basically use these um, to go ahead and create the look that you're that you want also have curves here if we go into that you know we just like we were doing before same concept and you can adjust this the way you need it uh, for the look you're trying to achieve well I hope that helps you be more comfortable with working with your HDSLR footage in post our next episode is going to be dealing with sound and syncing that in post because uh, we're usually going to be capturing sound on a different medium not straight on camera if you don't want to wait for the next episode to come out, go to our website, nextwavedv.com, and you can purchase the whole series at once by clicking on our products tab. If you do uh, purchase it online, you will have a bonus episode that won't be available here on YouTube. So we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.